Hello and welcome to Hillbilly DVD Reviews. The countdown to Expendables 2 just keeps on rolling along. Today we got the obscure and barely seen Sylvester Stallone flick, I See You. The story revolves around Stallone, he's playing an FBI agent. Turns out he used to be a local cop, he still hangs out with a bunch of cop buddies and shit like that. And you know, he's getting a lot of pressure from his old drunk cop buddies because basically what's going on, there's a serial killer killing cops all over the city. Stallone's at a bar, he's getting pissed drunk. One of his old buddies gave him a hard time. Looks like they're going to fucking go at it. Hey, turns out everything's all right. They shake hands, have one more beer, leave. Fucking Sloan's buddy goes home drunk as hell. The killer comes in, man. They even steal, like, some Dario Jenna bullshit where he looks in a little peephole and a fucking drill bit comes through, drills the motherfucker in the eye, gets all shit beat out of him, cut up, whatever. He gets hung up, strung up, fucking billy club, throw down his fucking throat. It's some gruesome ass shit, man. So... The next day, Stallone shows up, he realizes, hey, this is my fucking buddy here. What the fuck? Cut him down, all this shit. Next thing you know, at this crime scene, the phone rings. They say, hey, let me talk to Sylvester Stallone. He gets the fucking phone, and he's like, hey, you like what I did to your cop buddy and all this bullshit? Stallone's like, hey, man, fucking whatever. Turns out the killer has a personal vendetta against Sylvester Stallone. He tells him, hey, why don't you get fucking home, Stallone, as soon as you can, because I'm getting ready to do your girlfriend, played by Dina Meyer. He's like, I'm going to do this bitch all nasty. Stallone races home. Surprise, surprise, fucking, of course, Dina Meyer got slaughtered, hung up, and all this shit. So you're like, hey, fuck, you know, Stallone, he's, he like, he's all fuck. He comes out of the house, he's covering his girlfriend's blood and shit. He don't know what to do. This motherfucker's going crazy. Then all of a sudden, fucking comes out over the radio, fucking crackling. Hey, we got the killer. He's at some abandoned factory bullshit. Stallone goes to race. His fucking FBI partner, played by Charles S. Dutton. That's right. Even fuckers might know him from the old TV show Rock. Anyway, he's like, come on, Stallone. Sit this one out. You're too emotional. Stallone's like, fucker. I gotta go get a fucking car. There's like millions of SWAT teams, FBI agents everywhere combing this fucking factory. Somehow Stallone sniffs out the right hallway to go down all by himself. He starts chasing the killer. They're shooting it out and shit. All this crazy shit going on. Running through a bunch of rooms. Jumping off roofs. All this shit. Fucking Stallone's chasing this fucker. Finally finds his lair. You know, and you think all oh, this big showdown's going to go down and all this shit. And keep in mind, this is all the first 20 minutes of the movie, got it? There's like more story, more action going on in this motherfucker. The first 20 minutes than most movies combined. He gets to the lair, he finds the fucking killer, hung himself, like with a note saying, fuck you, you couldn't get me and all this shit. So, case closed, right? Case closed. So, anyway, he starts smoking cigarettes, he starts fucking getting drunk, being just like a real asshole. He's shooting guns off from fucking bars in the middle of the day and shit. So, his old partner, Charles S. Dutton, comes by, hey man. I'm gonna take you to fucking rehab and shit before you blow your brains out. So fucking Stallone's like, I ain't going to no rehab, whatever. Fucking slits his wrist, almost dies. Finally, get this motherfucker, Charles S. Dutton, takes him to rehab. But he don't take him to just any rehab. He takes him to a special rehab for fucking cops in a fucking abandoned military base in Wyoming run by Chris Christopherson. It's like this big, it's supposed to be an old base, but it looks like a missile bullshit goes, you know, underground. And meanwhile, it's snowy and shit. Nobody can live outside for more than five minutes. It's just fucking crazy. So he gets there. He meets all these other fucking drunk cops and shit. Great cast, man. You got fucking Sean Patrick Finley. You got fucking Robert Patrick. You got fucking Jeffrey Wright. And then uh, on the staff, you got Tom Bear. Tom Berger plays a hillbilly motherfucker named Hank. <laughs> He's on the staff as like the um, handyman and shit. And then what's funny is you got Stephen Lang. And of course, this movie's like from 10 years ago. Probably nobody gave a fuck who Stephen Lang was. But you know him now. He always plays a fucking villain, man. Villain in Avatar, villain in that fucking Coney and the Barbarian, everything. Always a fucking villain. No difference here, even though this fucking movie's old. Plays this orderly that just taunts the cops nonstop, calls them drunks, calls them worthless. Like, you gotta wonder, you gotta start to wonder, like, why would Chris Christopher keep this motherfucker? He's trying to get his motherfuckers off, off drugs and booze and shit, and then you got this orderly motherfucker supposed to be giving him medicine, instead he's just taunting him and shit, making him want to drink more. Long story short, Stallone gets there, he's still a wreck because, you know, his girlfriend got murdered and shit. Robert Patrick's a shit stir of the group, he's always starting shit, starts taunting Stallone for fucking, you know, not being able to save his girlfriend. And she's just a real prick, so you, you think Stallone, Robert Patrick, want to go after it? Next thing you know, motherfuckers start ending up dead. First they find him, looks like suicides, then it looks like a drug overdose, then a motherfucker hangs himself, and everybody's like, hmm, this is fucking curious. Like, and within one day, motherfucker, three motherfuckers die. Come on, you know something's up. Charles S. Dutton, he's staying nearby. He's like, I don't know, they didn't really explain it, but he's just like renting a cabin. I guess he was going to stay out in this cabin for like a month while Stallone was over in the rehab nearby. He goes out ice fishing one day, drills fucking hole in the ground, looks over, sees that there's a dead motherfucker floating in the lake. Well, turns out the dead motherfucker is actually one of the cops supposed to go to the rehab. Somebody killed him, took his ID, checked in the rehab under fucking this guy's name. 
basically turns into Agatha Christie's 10 Little Indians. Everybody gets picked off one by one. So eventually, of course, there's only a couple people left, Stallone and the killer. He figures out a killer is to go at it. Hey, pretty good fucking shit, man. You know, it's kind of a simplistic thriller, action movie, stalker premise, but I gotta say, what really sold me on this was the cast, all the actors I mentioned. I mean, you usually don't get Jeffrey Wright playing fucking future Hatchet Victor number three and shit. You know what I mean? This is a good fucking cast. Really adds a lot to every little character. They, they get, everybody has a distinct little personality in their story and what kind of cop they were and what they went through and shit, you know, before they all get, start getting killed off. I give this movie major credit for having that whole big opening that, like, could have been a whole movie into itself, but then it diverges off into another path, another setting, another tone, goes more from action, more to, like, thriller, horror. So hey man, for a little movie that nobody's seen, I actually like it quite a bit. The only real complaint that personally I had was a lot of the kills happen off screen and shit. And this is from a fucking horror director, man. He should be showing, I don't know if it was a producer or studio or what, but he should be able to show motherfuckers getting killed. That first guy got killed with a drill bit and I. That shit was good. That, I, that shit was good. But the rest is a little weak. They just kind of walk into a room, find dead bodies and shit. That's my only complaint and it is going to lose a point or two with that. But hey, you know, for being Stallone's first directed video movie and shit, it wasn't that bad at all. It kept my attention, kept me tense, just kept me wanting to know what was going to happen. If fucking Stallone was going to fucking get this killer, give him a good cuff and come up and send it in like the way these movies always justify. So you know what? Hey, you ever see Steven Seagal's fucking directed video movies, man? They're horrible. It looks like some homemade shit that his nephew filmed with a fucking home video camera and shit. This was a real movie, a widescreen, looked good, everything. So I'm going to give I See You as a movie. On a scale of 110, I'm going to give it 6.5. I really wanted to knock it up to 7, 7.5, but like I said, the kills, that could have been better. That was really kind of where they dropped the ball on this one. All right, picture and sound. This is just being out on DVD. I don't believe there's any Blu-ray out for this. Picture and sound was not too bad, but, you know, it, wasn't, it, it, it had the DVD softness. The soundtrack, there were some good surround effects, but a lot of movies whispering and dialogue and shit. Not too aggressive on the sound. Picture and sound kind of middle of the road DVD quality, I'm going to give it 6 out of 10. Well, special features, this is where they really shit the bed, man. On the back they list the deleted scenes, I watch them, man, it's fucking some bullshit. It's like, first of all, it's real piss poor VHS looking quality and shit, man. Fucking, there's only a couple scenes in there, nothing really good, nothing really adds to the story. They claim to have some actor interviews, I looked on that, man, it was everybody, like, not even Stallone was on the shit, but it was like everybody else, like Robert Patrick, Every interview was two minutes long. I had about eight fucking interviews, two minutes long. Fucking just answering random questions. It wasn't even like somebody interviewed them. It was bullshit, man. And then they had a trailer, and then they had fucking trailers for other unrelated movies. Come on, man. You gotta do better than that. Special features, they shit the bed on this. I'm gonna have to only give it three out of ten. For a Stallone purist, for a fucking completist, whatever, you gotta have I See You. Because it's not bad. And fucking Stallone plays a... He actually plays a good dramatic role. I'll give him credit, man. He was real dramatic, intense. Plays more like a regular guy, not just like a big, beefy, muscle-up motherfucker like Rambo and shit. So, hey.